What's up guys? Welcome to a brand new ranking video. Today I'm ranking all 10 Star Wars films. Yes, the main Star Wars films. I'm not talking about the Star Wars, the Clone Wars animated film. We don't need to talk about that one. That that just needs to be forgotten. But we're talking the 10 main Star Wars films. I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best, including with the new Solo the Star Wars story. That's why we're doing it, because I've seen Han Solo. I've come up with my ranking. I've seen it twice now, and I've rewatched all these films again and and you know these rankings usually do change after rewatching a lot of these films lately so it's gonna be nice to actually get my thoughts out there and pretty much say what i think and of course guys let's just get straight into it but before we get into it make sure to comment down below and tell me what your guys's ranking is of the star wars franchise because that's the most important thing is us having a lively discussion down below of why you guys have these certain films at certain places let's get started coming in down at number 10 is gonna be drum roll the phantom menace Number 10. Now, Phantom Menace and Attack of Clones do go back and forth for me. Spoiler alert for my number 9. But Phantom Menace is number 10 for me because I it's a hard film to get through. I, I fall asleep. Not going to lie. It's kind of boring. And there are parts to it that are awesome. Darth Maul especially. Darth Maul is one of the coolest aspects of that whole film. The Duel Fates is one of the best lightsaber battles in any Star Wars film. The score for here is fantastic. Some of the CGI is... Eh. Jar Jar Binks is in here. Maybe that's the main reason why this is at the bottom. But of course, Qui-Gon Jinn's in here, and Qui-Gon Jinn's one of the coolest characters in Star Wars lore. I'd love to see more of him maybe in a comic book or a book, or maybe even a game. I don't want a solo anthology film of him. I just want to see him in some other small capacity of that. Maybe throw him into one of the TV shows if you go back to those prequel eras. But still, I, I it's a cool little era to show. It, it developed more into the Star Wars lore, and a given, yes, Jar Jar's in there. Yes, the dialogue's horrible, and the podcast... And yes, the pod racing scene is just fine. But the thing that really saves this film is Darth Maul, the dual fate scene, and the score. Fantastic all around. And then, of course, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon are just standouts for the whole film in general. And number nine is going to be Attack of the Clones. Yes, I spoiled this already. Uh, Attack of the Clones is one of those films where the clones don't attack till the last... 10 minutes but the thing I, I actually rank this one above even though the, the love story in this film just fall apart Hayden Christensen does this pedophile weird look the whole time and apparently he hates sand and because it's everywhere <laughs> but no seriously attack of the clones is at number nine for me because the ending of this film is really cool the battle sequences are awesome you know this is the Jedi order that a lot of us wanted to see forever you know when the original trilogy came out this was these area that we wanted to see all the jedi fighting together and that last battle sequence when you see all the jedi all the clones all the troopers everyone just fighting together it's a great scene count dooku has some great scenes in here count dooku is a very underrated character in the star wars lore I, I love the character in general there are some nice tidbits to anakin's story even though the love story does not work completely i do like natalie portman in the role yes the chemistry is not there yes the dialogue is horrible but she has a sense of charm to her, even at this young age of her acting, and I do appreciate that. Yes, the film is not perfect. Yes, there are a lot of issues with this film, but I do find some reasons to at least enjoy this, even if it's kind of more in a guilty pleasure type of way. I mean, at number eight, it's actually going to be Solo, A Star Wars Story. Yes, yeah, the brand new Star Wars film. Now, at number eight and above, I actually do enjoy all these films. I don't fall asleep. I find them all very entertaining and, at least in some ways, fun. And... Solo, Star Wars Story, is a fun film. Some people have been calling it mediocre, and I don't think it's mediocre. I think it is a fun Star Wars film, and the thing that it did well is it showed me why we needed this film. Did we need it completely? No, but I think it did open up some cool corner pockets into the universe and the whole crime saga, crime universe, the underworld universe, in fact, in the Star Wars lore that we've always heard about, and I think it adds into more anthology films that if you guys want to know about, I'm actually going to do a separate video on that talking about other anthology films that I think this film opened up to be but i think alden does a great job as han you know he fades into the role quickly donald glover's the huge standout as lando he's great i wanted more of him kira is a great addition with amelia clark playing her uh tobias becker played by woody harrelson's great and really just the main standout in here if i'm being completely honest is chewbacca if, if you're having issues that chewbacca isn't in the new saga as much you're gonna love han solo because chewbacca is one of the main characters in there me at number seven is gonna be rogue one now rogue one is one of those films i go back and forth on i do think, think rogue one is an overrated film in the star wars lore i know a lot of people think this is one of the best star wars films ever made i do not i think the first two acts are very lacking especially the first one the first one's death it's like dead on arrival for me i just can never get into this film there's no character development for any of these characters and i get that's not the point of the film but the thing is is that they marketed it to be a very gritty star wars film and i never got that grittiness to it in fact solo had a more gritty action sequence than rogue one ever did it's 
let's get the matter of the fact is Rogue One does have some pretty badass sequences. The Darth Vader scene at the end is one of the best moments in Star Wars history. I would love to see another Darth Vader thing like that. Darth Vader is one of the coolest characters in there. Uh, K2SO is one of the coolest droids I've ever seen in a film. I loved K2SO. And overall, the characters, they had their moments to shine. A lot of them were really cool, great cast in there. And the third act, again, is one of the best third acts in any film. It's just those first two acts that really tear this film apart that I wish were a little bit better. Again, not a bad film. This is still a very good film. And it's an enjoyable watch as well. But for me, the pacing's slow, and I just find this film to be kind of overrated when people are praising this to be one of the best Star Wars films. Again, not a bad film, it's just a good film. I mean, at number six is going to be Revenge of the Sith. Now, this is one of the first films. Actually, this is the first Star Wars film I do remember seeing in the theater. I remember my dad took me out of school to go see it because I was bugging the hell out of him to go see it. And I loved Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith is a great film. It holds up to me. I think this is the best dialogue in the prequel series. It's easily the best prequel film. And it's the most watchable out of all of them. It is the longest, but that's still not a bad thing. I think this film has a very nice structure to it. Again, the dialogue is not the best, but it's not the worst and there are some bad moments in here but obi-wan and anakin's lightsaber fight is great uh, general grievous i loved him i wanted more of him if you can't tell by the toy over here and i have tons of general grievous stuff i loved him he's a very underrated character but even going from farther than there i think there's a lot of great humor in here i actually think there's good heart in this film and again great action sequences a great story and this film just very moves at a nice pace it never feels like it's lagging it just keeps going and going and going of course when the executions start happening of all the jedi it, it's just a great moment it's a dark film at times but it also is a very well done film i think george lucas did a good job on this prequel series he took his complaints from the first two and really threw them into here yes he still stuck with long with some of the other complaints but still render the sith is easily the best prequel film and a very rewatchable one and coming at number five is going to be the last Jedi. Now, this film has fallen considerably lower than what it was originally when I did this ranking a couple months back. It's not because it's a bad film. I get it. There's people out there who hate this film, and I get it. There's people out there who love this film, and I wasn't that loving majority of it. But then as you rewatch the film, I rate this film in two different ways. As a film, it's an A. As an entertainment film, it's like a C+. Uh, there's some nice entertaining moments to it, but there are a lot of bad moments to this film. A lot of faults to this film that really, the more you rewatch the film, the aspects that are fantastic to me are amazing. The aspects that are horrible to me are just even more horrible. Canto Bite especially is one of the worst platforms in there. Poe Dameron's whole storyline, the whole Admiral Haldo and just keeping it away from it never made sense to me. And just in general, the only main arcs to me that really I liked was Kylo Ren, which I'll even proclaim that Kylo Ren is the best Star Wars villain to date. Is character development. I cannot wait to see where they take his character. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Last Jedi for some reason, they killed Snoke. I think that's a great addition. I think it's different. I would have loved to see more of him, don't get me wrong, but it was shocking. It surprised me. Yoda was nice to see Yoda in here as well. Luke's storyline, I, I think that's the most controversial part for what people were wanting. I put it as this way. The film gave me nothing I wanted from Luke's storyline, but something I didn't expect that I would really like. And I liked seeing that, you know, when you finally meet this legend hero and how different he actually is, it's, it's different to say the least. And I, and I like the portrayal of that because that is a real world thing and a real world issue that some of us do deal with. And I liked seeing that within Luke. Luke and Ray's dynamics were great. Ray had a great storyline in here. And I just overall, I enjoyed the film for what it is. I don't like rewatching it as much as I used to. It does have one of the best action sequences in the Star Wars movies with the Praetorian guards, Kylo Ren and Ray. That, that was a fantastic sequence. I wish we would have gotten more of those the whole salt planet I, I can never remember the name but the salt planet it, it was just such a great dynamic the cinematography was beautiful for that scene i know there are some misses for this film a lot of the stuff dealing with finn's storyline and rose's storyline and poe's storyline but i think kylo ren's storyline in here adding into ray's and luke's is just fantastic in that part and i think that's what makes this film really stay afloat for me and I could just go forever talking about The Last Jedi because there's so much to talk about it. But if you guys want more thoughts about that, maybe I'll do a separate video for that one day. Coming at number four is the OG film, A New Hope. I love A New Hope. A New Hope started the Star Wars franchise. What do you expect A New Hope else to be? It's what made Star Wars what it is. It was one of the best films to really bring us into a brand new world, introducing Luke, Han, and Leia, the three biggest characters in probably any Hollywood film ever. I love each of these characters. It really introduced them in a great manner. C-3PO and R2-D2 are great side characters as well. Obi-Wan bringing him in as well. You know, this whole film in general, just it, it makes people's lives. A lot of people have this film higher. I For me, it's not as high because I do 
think the film is a little bit slow in its pace at times, but I think that's what the film is supposed to be. It's supposed to be building up to be what it is. And again, great action in here, great sound design, and great score. I, I love A New Hope. It, it's one of the best films out there. It's one of the most classic films out there. I, I, I'd hail it as a classic. Coming at number three is going to be The Force Awakens. I love The Force Awakens. Maybe it's just mostly because of the theater experience I've gotten with this film, but especially the more... I think this is one of the most rewatchable Star Wars films. Every time I rewatch it, I find something more to like about it. I, it's not one of those films I like to tear apart. There are issues with it again, but I, none of the issues are really glaring to me. None of them bother me completely. When I watch the film, it's fun to watch. I probably rewatch this film maybe once a month because it's just, it, it always puts a smile on my face. It brings back great memories of waiting outside the theater for 12 hours with my best friend George to see the new film, watching the old films on a DVD, playing on this guy's GameCube, having lightsaber fights with a bunch of other nerds. It was one of the best experiences ever. And then going into the theater, hearing people cry when the score came on, when the opening crawl came up, it, it was such a, a new feeling I'd never had seeing a film before. And it was one of the best theater experiences I've ever had in my whole life. I love The Force for what it did and I, I love that it just brought a whole new generation to appreciating Star Wars plus the characters they introduced were great loved it coming at number two is going to be return of the jedi i always put this film up there you know this is another rewatchable star wars film when i was a kid this was my favorite one why is that because the action sequences in here are so great i like the ewoks i know people hate them but i like them they're cute they're cuddly and they're fun as fuck and the other thing about the return of the jedi that's great is it has one of the best starship battle sequences in the space it, it it's so great it holds up beautifully uh, return of the jedi it, it just has so many fun moments in in it and it's such a great conclusion to a trilogy i know some people will even hail this as the fuck the sequel fuck everything else this is the only thing that matters for star wars and that's fine if you think that but i think return of the jedi is a fantastic film and especially what it adds in layers from other films as well it, it, it's just so fun I, I think a lot of people i think this is an underrated star wars film i think people bash it there are issues with it but it has such a nice structured line some of the story issues are a little bit weird that they chose to do but still it's an entertaining it's a watchable and it's it's one of those summer blockbuster films, really. At the time, I'm sure it was. It was just awesome. Coming at number one is going to be Empire Strikes Back. It's still my number one favorite Star Wars film. It's probably always going to be it. It's one of the hardest films to ever beat. But the reason it's at number one is because it was different. Given The Last Jedi was different, which is one of the reasons I actually really appreciate that film for how different it went. But Empire Strikes Back at the time, a lot of people did not like this film. It was dark. It was different than A New Hope. And that's... What I want from films is to take that chance, take that chance, and at, now Empire Strikes Back is hailed as one of the best films ever made. The way the set design, the score again, always beautiful, all the Star Wars films always have the best in those, but it's not just that, it's the world building in here, the character building, the action in here, the Hoth battle sequence I love. And then even going from there, the Cloud City meeting Lando Calrissian for the first time was great. Jabba the Hutt getting introduced as well. Other story developments with Darth Vader and Luke. One of the biggest twists of all time in Hollywood history, even though almost every single person knows it. Empire Strikes Back, what else can I say? It's the best Star Wars film. I'd be surprised if anyone went against that. It's hard to argue that it's not. But again, that's the best thing about film is all of us have different thoughts about it. So guys, with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this ranking of the Star Wars franchise. It was really nice to go back through, rewatch them, and really get our definitive ranking through this since I, I finally got to see Last Jedi a couple more times. And I was so iffy on placing it at number two the last time I went around in now actually sitting on the all these films, it's better to say where it's at. And again really fun to do these films i love the star wars lore i love the star wars movies they're one of my favorite franchises in the world seriously i'm obsessed with star wars but with that said guys i want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on my list and what your guys' ranking would be that's the most important thing guys so make sure to come back and tell me what your guys' ranking is after han solo that's going to be the really important part thank you guys so much for watching if you're new here make sure that like and, and consider subscribing because i do tons of rankings and other reviews and i'd really appreciate it i love talking down below with you guys and starting lively discussions that's the best thing for me and the other important part is guys go hit up all my social media if you guys want to talk more geeky culture over on twitter instagram or even stardust but if you guys want a chance to win in advanced movie screen or even check out other movie news and movie reviews that I never really do cover, go check out Sandwich on Films down below. It's a website that I'm a part of. It's a fantastic website. I'm not just saying that. I used to actually use the website before being a part of it. So I do recommend it. So again, if you want to make your friends jealous, go see some movies early. Go check it out. If you guys want to check out some movie news, go check that out. And also movie reviews over there. Guys, of course, until next time, may the force be with you and stay classy.